Hey guys, welcome back. So if you're like me and you have little RC cars or RC trucks or whatever, you have a bunch of these little LiPo batteries. But if you're also like me and have RC boats, maybe your LiPo batteries won't have fared so well. So this is just an example here. If I pull on this, this JST connector completely green and so are all the balance leads. So how are we going to fix this? Well, you can get just the empty plug and the pins, but you need another tool to do this. And that tool is a crimper. So these crimpers are very expensive if you buy them from Molex or JST or whoever the actual OEMs are, but this one isn't. This one is just from the usual suspects like AliExpress or eBay. It's about eight bucks or nine bucks Canadian. And I'm here to tell you it's worth it. It's great. So how this works is that you have these sort of uh, these jaws set up to accept these pins, the raw pins, and you just kind of crimp it like this. It ratchets in and it will crimp it onto the wire, crimp it onto do the electrical connection and also uh, the mechanical hold onto the insulation and once you get to its full swing it just opens and that's it so I'm gonna try to do a couple of these for you but first let's take a look at these jaws and how they're made so the jaws do come out they are interchangeable if you look here you'll see that there's kind of two sections to these jaws there's sort of this section here goes a bit deeper and this section here which is a bit shallower if I show you that straight on you might be able to see it see there there's a ridge right there and that ridge is really for how these are built here if you can see here just about there you see how there's a little piece of metal there that bends over and then you've got a big piece of metal here that bends over now what it is, is your stripped wire will sit inside here in the little ridges which will be crimped by this higher region and then the insulation of your wire will be in kind of like this bigger ridge here which will get crimped by the bigger section here. This is your mechanical hold and this is your electrical hold. Now you could solder these. Um, I don't know if you'll get the solder small enough so that this will slide back into the plastic receptacle but if you're kind of worried about this not making good electrical connection just realize that with enough force you're actually cold welding the metals together so theoretically you could actually get a better hold with um, mechanical clamping rather than soldering so let's give that a shot see if we can do it so first of all, I have to start with a safety warning. Uh, lithium batteries are not to be toyed with. If you don't understand what you're doing, not a good idea to mess with these. Um, they can, If you short them out, they can catch fire. I have a metal tin to the side, just in case something goes wrong. So I'm safe here. If you're going to do this at home, be safe too. So the first thing we'll start by doing is the red, because that's the one that actually fell out when I tried to remove these pins. So we're going to start with this. Um, it's important that you don't do both at the same time. You only do one at a time because if they touch together, you're going to short this. Okay, so I'm going to start by cutting this off. Usually it's not worth the effort to try to take the crimp off of a uh, wire to have the full length. Okay, I'm going to strip a little bit. Now the amount that you strip is kind of important because it needs to be long enough that it reaches the portion that is the electrical hold and not too long that it protrudes into the connector itself. So then you grab your strips here, you break one off. You can do this by bending it back and forth. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up into my pliers. Now you can see the, the big part goes on the back side here. Hopefully I'm in focus here. The big part goes in here. I'm just going to just gently put this down so that it holds it. 
Okay, I'm going to inspect it. Okay, it looks good. It is going in a bit crooked there, so we'll see if it actually works. I'm going to slide the wire in, making sure this is tidy. We don't want any strands anywhere. I'm going to slide the wire in, and don't forget the insulation needs to go on the thicker part. So make sure that, oh, see, I got a strand out there. So make sure that the insulation is actually inside. Okay, I'm going to crimp and release. Let's take a closer look at our connection and make sure it's a good one. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up here, but if you can see, the two metal tabs here, they've closed down on our insulation and the two smaller metal tabs here have closed down on our wire. Our wire was a bit too long, it was stripped a bit too long, but I can usually brush these back, that's not too bad. If it's much longer and it's inside this hollow piece here, you're never going to get it to connect. But yeah, that's basically it. Your mechanical hold is here, your electrical hold is here, and your connection is made inside here. It looks pretty good. While I have you this close though, we have to remember that these connectors are polarized and I don't know if you can see that but it says here JST and I think it says 1 and 2 yep that's what it says and so we took the red out of the 2 so we're gonna have to slide it into the 2 on the new casing now don't forget that these little holes on the top here these connectors have a little spring. See that little spring up there? Right up there? It has to go through that hole. So I'm going to push it in. And sometimes this section here is too fat. It won't go in. So if you if that happens, you could just take it out. Give it a little bit of a crush sort of this way. I'm going to crush it. Don't cut it, just crush it. that makes it a little bit thinner and sometimes helps it come in. So again, number two, the spring facing up, push these together. It's a bit too fat still, but I think we can get it in. I don't mind it being a little tight in there. Come on in. Okay, maybe we have to crush it a little bit more. So I'm going to pull it out, just gently give it a wiggle, and I'm going to crush it some more, and we'll try again. I've crushed it a little bit more. Patience is key with these things. So again, that little spring up here. Push this in. And now it's supposed to click in, with that little spring. And it seems to have here, but if you're a little paranoid, you can go in there with a little needle and pull this, this little spring up higher so it's a tighter hold. But I can see it's pretty good here. Let's move on to the other one now. Same deal with the negative. I'm just going to show you how I get them out. So first you push the cable in to release the pressure on the lock. Then you get a little sharp object, a needle or this is, this is a pair of tweezers, and you push down on that spring. I push it down quite a bit there because I don't really care about getting it back. And then you just pull it apart. Look at all the rust on this thing. Okay. I want to trim it just about the same length. So I didn't take that much off. I think it was uh, about here. Actually, I have the other piece to compare. Okay, just about there. I'm going to trim this off. Strip a bit of the end. These are just silicone wires, so you can use your thumbnails if you got them. Okay, give this a twist. The tighter you twist it, the better it is. I'm going to break off one of these connectors. There we go. I'm going to sit it in the jaws. So the small end is this is the big end here. Okay, I'm going to set that in there. Okay, 
give it a bit of tension just so it holds not too much though because if you crush this thing the wire won't go in I've done that before I'll probably do it again okay shove this in okay, it should be in far enough looks like I stripped too much we'll see release yeah, there we go, a couple of hairs extra. But otherwise, a nice crimp. Let's take a closer look at this again. There's the crimp in all its glory. Again, a couple of hairs too many. It's not too bad because it'll sit in its own compartment. I'm going to give this a little bit of a crush. Pardon the really rusty pliers. I need to get my regular tools down here. Okay, give that just work it around a little bit just to make it more circular. And then in the hole it goes. So you see that little spring there? Spring needs to face upwards. Okay, and in it goes. And there we go. So just about the right length. Like that. And we've got a brand new rust free connector. Pretty sweet. So now the process is exactly the same for the balance connector. You see the rust there. So you can do the same thing over. You just need slightly different uh, pins for these. They're specific for these sort of Molex connectors. But yeah, there you go. So there you have it. A $9 tool that can repair things that are much more expensive than it. Isn't that the point of tools? Thanks for watching.